Now, as I say, the last break-off shot he played was the only shot he played in frame two. He caught the blue full in the face, so Sullivan made 81. So he's 2-1 up Pang, but needs a better one. He may not have hit the blue, but he has left a long red that O'Sullivan will not be refusing. As you can see, when the cue ball came to rest, it's coming between shots a little. Uh, got into the white a little too much there. Six. He'll be annoyed by that. I mean, he knocked in an important blue, but somehow he's not finished on a red. Uh, he doesn't surely want to play anything too risky. I think he considered screwing the red well, he's closest to into Six. the left corner, be annoyed to finish in that position and have to play something of a nothing shot after such a, a good opening red. I think I think if it's Alan hadn't got to the mid session at two each, he'd be more than happy with that on the, the run of play. Because Pang's been pretty good. You know, even great players will be happy with a certain scoreline at the mid-session if you can get things level, D depending on you know, what has happened in the first few frames itself. Playing second fiddle here, O'Sullivan, there's no oh. doubt. Pang Junxu, four. Well now, yes, there's a red on, and it's a long way from cue ball to object ball, and that cue ball is then going to go across the table pretty much into the unknown as to where it'll finish. One. It's a problem. You, you have no control over it. And he clearly has got very little that he can do that's meaningful here. Ronnie Sullivan won. Mark 
Selby's pulled a frame back. He was 2-1, 2 nil down to Nopin Sengarm. He's won the third frame. Jackson Page, 2-1 up on Ali Carter. Of course, uh, it could be O'Sullivan Carter again, possibly, in the next round. Might be neither of them. A lot of big names still going, but uh, we've seen players come through the pack. Jagu Dong did it in Wuhan. Of course, he's playing Mark Allen later. Shanganda did it in this event last year. a beautiful shot uh, that's the best he's hit uh, I think the whole of the week I mean it's a long range just off straight and the cue ball has gone exactly where he meant it to go so excellent from Asalo in that last one you saw from the overhead the black very clearly goes to the left corner which he'll have already spotted and he'll be playing on it from this next red but he probably would like an angle on the black to perhaps disturb the reds directly above it. Just clear the decks for the black to both pockets. And this is where Seven. anyone trying to learn how to build breaks should watch out Sullivan because the balls are not always starting off in great positions. But they usually end up in pretty good shape. 14. Well, I don't think he wanted to play this right hand red, but he, it might be that that's a good way of getting the black in play to both pockets. Whether he can reach across, play it left handed to get to it, I'm not certain. Be a real asset if he could reach this. Yep. That's where Pian Ambidextrous is such a huge asset. That would have been a wretched, difficult shot using the rest leaning across. Just as he played the shot, you could see Joe O'Connor in the background potting a yellow. He's made another century, so he's made two, but he is two all with Judd Trump. A great start for Joe, but still only level. Just over screwed a little bit there. Clearly wanted to be on the red he's, he's actually going to play, but can't avoid a little cannon here on the pink. 24. So now he's just trying to chase the break again. Wrong side of the blue. Brown could be in the way. Coming around the angles if he isn't careful. He's played it beautifully. Beautifully. Twenty nine. Thirty. Uh, 
35. 36. Oh, might have to be the black now. Quite a thin pop this and might be able to play a little cannon to stop the cue ball travelling too far down the table. And that is as good as it gets. Could have gone wrong in so many different ways that shot. He could have missed it, the pot. 43. Or dropped out of position. None of those things happened. 44. This phone alert's going off, but not distracting O'Sullivan while he's in business here. And the phone continues to... 51. ..to ring, but... 52. This is frame ball. Yeah, if it's the barman, you tell them you're on your way because you're about to go to the interval. This has been a terrific break because it was by no means straightforward, but he's manoeuvred this cue ball very nicely indeed, and it sets it up nicely for us for the second half. It does, a terrific break in many ways. The opening red was an absolute 60. gem that he knocked in at long distance. And like you say, it's not been easy all the way through it. He looks very keen, doesn't he? I mean, he was keen in the safety battle. OK, in the last frame, he lost that battle, but in terms of just his general approach, in all areas, he's switched on, he's concentrating. 67. Pang Zhu has put 68. him under it, but O'Sullivan has responded. 68. He didn't always sort of enjoy travelling to China. He didn't always play in these tournaments, but... That's changed now, and 76. he always speaks very well about them and was saying yesterday how much he was enjoying Nanjing, so he wants to stay here as long as he can. 83. Well, the two frames he's won have been with big breaks, 81 and 83. Pang Zheng Zhu has also played well, so it's a good match, this. And it's set up perfectly for everybody watching because they go to the interval all square at 2-2. Remember, six frames required to reach the last 16 of the International Championship.